Hey guys, I'm back with the fifth video on the video series of Tissues Class 9 Science and in this video we are going to learn about the types of epithelial tissues. So this is again in continuation with the previous video where we already started discussing about what an epithelial tissue is. So are we all ready? Let's get started. So now that we have got a good amount of idea about what are epithelial tissues, it is a good time that we start with the various types of epithelial tissue. Now there are various types of epithelial tissues which are present. Now how have we classified epithelial tissue? We have classified epithelial tissue based on the structure of the epithelial tissue. Now, broadly epithelial tissue is classified into two types, simple epithelium and stratified epithelium. So these are the two main classifications of epithelial tissue, simple epithelium and stratified epithelium. So what is a simple epithelium? Again, if the name is simple, it is going to be something simple, right? So simple epithelium means it will consist of only one layer. So a single layer epithelium is simple epithelium so simple means single but whenever we have multiple layers of cells then we have stratified epithelium so this is an epithelial tissue right so the tissue consists of cells so simple epithelium will have a single layer of cells but stratified epithelium will have multiple layer of cells so, so on this basis, whether they have single layer or uh, multiple layers, they are classified as simple epithelium and stratified epithelium. Now in simple epithelium, we have three types that is simple squamous, simple cuboidal and simple columnar. So these three types are on the basis of the shape of the cells. So depending upon the shape and size of the cells, they have been categorized into these three types. Similarly, under stratified, we have three types that is stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal and pseudo stratified columnar. Right. So now we will discuss about each of them in detail one by one. So here I am not discussing about all of them because that will create confusion. So we will start with the first one that is the simple squamous epithelium. Now one interesting thing which we will notice that now each of these types of epithelium are present in specific places. So now we will come to know why a particular type of epithelium is present in a particular location. So that will also have a logic behind it. Right. So let us start with simple squamous epithelium. So let us now talk about simple squamous epithelium. So as I said, simple epithelium will always have a single layer. So it is a single layer of thin, flat, plate-like structures. So they are called squamous. So squamous, the word squamous is for flat, plate-like structures. So now as you can see in this picture, so they are a single layer. So it is a very thin layer. So you can have an idea of the thickness from this. So this much is the thickness. So thin, flat, plate-like structure. So it looks somewhat like plate, right? So where do we find these kind of um, simple squamous epithelium? We'll see that. So in this case, the nucleus is flattened and oblong. So generally, the nucleus also in these kind of epithelium is kind of flattened because the uh, cells are also flat, plate-like, right? So since the cells are flat, so the nucleus are also to some extent flattened. They are found in the lining of cavities like mouth, esophagus, heart, lungs. So they are generally found in the lining of these kind of organs. Right. Now the question is why this thin and flat structures are found in such locations. Now if you have a look at these places which we, I have talked about whether it is mouth or esophagus or heart or lungs, lungs at all these locations transport of substance takes place through a selectively permeable membrane, right? Whether it is mouth. In mouth, the intake of food takes place. So that means through a membrane, 
transport of substances take place if we talk about lungs and lungs also the absorption of oxygen takes place so the transport takes place through a semi permeable membrane right now these thin and flat uh, structures will be helpful in transport transportation of substances that's because let us suppose if you have a thick structure let us suppose if this is a thick structure and you have some substances which are to be transported through this boundary and on the other hand you have a thin structure like this and in this case you have to transport these substances through this boundary which is easier do you think this is easier right because when you want the transfer of materials to take place across a boundary so that should be thin and flat that makes it better so that is why this thin flat epithelium that is the simple squamous epithelium is present in locations where transport of substances takes place through a selectively permeable membrane and i am sure you know what is selectively permeable by now because we have spoken about it in detail while we were talk while we were learning the lesson on cell selectively permeable means it knows which substances to allow and which substances not to allow right so that is all about simple squamous epithelium so it is also found in the outer layer of skin because outer layer of skin also is used for like for example we pour water right sometimes something happens on our skin and we apply medicine so everything has to be transported inside so there also transfer of material has to take place so the outer layer of skin is also made up of the simple squamous epithelium it offers very little protection allows passage of materials now why it offers little protection because it is very thin and flat so it it itself is very delicate right so when it is itself so delicate it cannot provide much protection however it allows passage of materials so the passage of materials is the major function which this kind of epithelium performs let us now look at the next type of simple epithelium that is simple cuboidal epithelium now here again the term cuboidal will tell you something not something in fact a lot about this kind of epithelium cuboidal means something in the shape of a cuboid right we all know what is a cuboid something like this correct okay so these are single layer of cube shaped cells because again simple epithelium so single layer cuboidal therefore cube shaped cells where are they found they are found in the lining of kidney tubules and ducts of salivary glands so these are the places where these kind of epithelium are found so if you look at the picture you can get an idea about how they look so if you see small small cubes arranged together to form this simple cuboidal epithelium now what is the purpose of i mean why are they present in kidney tubules and salivary glands so there has to be a reason and the reason is that this kind of epithelium helps in absorption as well as secretion so secretion when i talk of secretion i am talking about salivary glands the glands which secretes saliva so these kind of epithelium are good for absorption so they can absorb materials and it is also good for secretion so when i talk of absorption you can think of kidney tubules because kidney tubules helps in absorption and transportation of substances which are filtered by the kidney what is the purpose of kidney kidney actually does filtration right it cleans out things so after filtration whatever substances come out so the kidney tubules actually helps in absorption of those substances right now since absorption and secretion are the two specialities of these kind of epithelium so that is why they are present in kidney tubules and salivary glands they also provide mechanical support now since this simple cuboidal epithelium is little stronger as compared to the simple squamous epithelium so they can provide some support also for example the previous one i said that since it was itself very thin and flat structure itself it was very delicate therefore simple squamous epithelium was not giving much protection but here it can give some mechanical support 
It offers some protection, mostly helpful in secretion and absorption. And that is why these are present in such places. But it protects, it gives some protection, at least better than the simple squamous epithelium. Right? So now you are understanding how each type of epithelium has a specific purpose. Like the simple squamous epithelium, what is the main purpose? Passage of materials. For simple cuboidal, what is the main purpose? Absorption and secretion. Right? Let us now look at the third type that is the simple columnar epithelium. So here again, as the name suggests, it is a single layer of tall pillar-like cells. The word columnar is derived from column. Column means something like this. We talk about rows and columns, right? Columns mean something which is tall, something which is like a pillar. So these are single layer of tall pillar-like cells. So you can see that clearly in this picture. So you see they are tall cells, right? So they offer little more protection compared to squamous and cuboidal epithelium. That is quite evident from their structure. Now let us suppose, now you can compare it like this. Let us suppose if you have some organ here. So if you have this epithelium, you see because of its tall height, it can provide lot more protection, right? When compared to the flat epithelium, flat epithelium would have been up to here itself, right? So the flat epithelium will not be able to give much protection. I'll give you a practical example. Let us suppose you are traveling from one place to another and you have some glass bowls to carry with you. So you would have often seen your moms that when they pack suitcases, what do they do? They do not just keep the glass bowl simply inside the suitcase. What they do? They generally try to wrap it with some cloth or they try to wrap it with some tissue paper or with a towel like thing so that they give some cushioning effect to that glass because the glass is a very delicate object so it can break down any moment a little bit of pressure comes from any end right so what do they do they wrap it in some soft material so that it gets some cushioning effect and does not break so similar is the thing here. In this case also, the columnar epithelium, since they are tall pillar-like cells, so they give more cushioning effect. So they can give more protection. When compared to the squamous epithelium, which is very flat and delicate itself. So since it is itself delicate, so it cannot give protection. The cuboidal one, little better than the squamous epithelium. right? So here, giving protection becomes a major function. It also specializes in secretion and absorption. So it is also present in at places where things are secreted or things are absorbed. So where do we see this? It is found in the inner lining of the intestine because even in case of intestine also, absorption of nutrient takes place because intestine plays a very important role in digestion, right? Now, when the food gets digested, what happens is the nutrients from the food has to be absorbed. So, during that absorption, these kind of simple columnar epithelium really helps. Now, in simple columnar epithelium, okay, also when I talk about this intestine thing, there is another thing which I need to talk. Now, when I talk of intestine, the in, why is it present in the intestine? If absorption is the only purpose in intestine, then why do we need simple columnar epithelium? We could have uh, placed simple cuboidal epithelium. The thing is that in case of intestine, the intestine needs protection as well as absorption. Right? So when you need absorption and secretion along with protection, then you need simple columnar because the simple cuboidal epithelium cannot give much protection. Now why the intestine needs protection? Now the intestine needs protection against undesirable substances like bacteria because bacteria, if bacteria or any other such microbes enter your intestine, they can cause problems with your health. Right? So they can cause problem with the digestion, they can cause stomach infection, right? So they can disbalance the body. So that means the intestine needs protection. At the same time, the intestine wants to absorb the nutrients from food. So the intestine needs protection plus absorption. So that is why we have simple columnar epithelium and not cuboidal epithelium in this case. Right? Okay. 
So now when I am talking about simple columnar epithelium, I would also like to talk about a special kind of simple columnar epithelium which is ciliated columnar epithelium. So this special type of simple columnar epithelium is mostly present in the respiratory tract. So what is a ciliated columnar epithelium? That means a simple columnar epithelium with hair-like structures on its outer surface. So these hair-like structures are known as cilia. We have spoken about cilia in our previous lesson while we were talking about amoeba, paramecium and all right. So what are cilia? Cilia are the hair-like structures. So small hair-like structures which are present on the outer surface of the epithelial cells. So now if the cilia are present on the outer surface of columnar epithelium, then that epithelium is known as ciliated columnar epithelium. Now the question is how this addition of cilia helps. So how this ciliated epithelium actually helps in the respiratory tract. So this is how a ciliated epithelium looks like. See, the columnar epithelium earlier was like this. So these are the columnar cells. And here you see these structures. So these are the cilia. Right? So therefore, this is known as ciliated columnar epithelium. Correct? Okay. So now how this ciliated columnar epithelium actually helps in the respiratory tract. So if it is present, how will it actually help? <coughs> Now what happens in the respiratory tract? Respiratory, what is, now I will not get inside the detail of the structure of the respiratory tract, but just to explain you, just imagine what happened during respiration. We breathe in, we breathe out. That is all about the respiration, right? <clears throat> now, there is a slippery fluid-like substance <clears throat> which is secreted by some specialized glands and that fluid is known as mucus. You would have often seen that sometimes when you catch cold, what happens? There is a fluid-like structure which starts flowing through your nose, right? So what is that fluid-like structure? So that I'm talking about that fluid-like structure which is secreted by specialized glands which are present inside the respiratory tract. Now this fluid-like structure is known as mucus. Now what is the role of the mucus? This mucus actually protect the lungs by trapping the foreign materials that enter it. When we breathe, we might breathe in some materials which are harmful to the body. So now if there is nothing to prevent that material from going inside the lungs, then what will happen? Those foreign materials can damage the lungs. Correct? But because of the presence of those fluid-like structure called mucus, what happens? The mucus actually blocks those materials. So the mucus will prevent those materials from entering the lungs. So in particular, now this mucus mostly works through nose during breathing. So when we breathe, so the mucus will stop the foreign particles. Now what happens with the cilia? Now what happens if you have the cilia? The cilia actually are the hair-like structures which keep moving. Now as the cilia moves, these movement helps to move the mucus and sweeps the mucus away from the nostrils and takes it towards the back of the throat. So where do you have your nostrils? Maybe somewhere here, right? So when you breathe in, what happens? You breathe in like this, right? So whatever you breathe in that goes in like this. So now somewhere here inside you have the mucus glands. The mucus glands are those glands which actually secrete mucus, right? So that mucus will be some fluid like structure which will stop, which will stop the foreign particles from entering. Now what, where will this mucus go? So the mucus also needs to go away from the nostrils otherwise it will block the air also to get in. So we will not be able to breathe. Right? So now the cilia which is present, the cilia keeps moving and because of the movement of the cilia, so the cilia acts like a brush like structure, right? So if you move a brush, you can sweep things, right? You would have seen your uh, maid cleaning your house with the help of a broomstick, right? So what does she do? They are 
thread like hair like structures with that she just cleans the floor so similarly the cilia when as it moves it will sweep the mucus and it will take it away from the nose and it will sweep it towards the back of the throat so it will take it towards the back of the throat now as it goes towards the back of the throat what happens there is nothing to block the air which is coming through your nostrils so again you can breathe in and again the foreign particles will be trapped by mucus and the mucus will again be swept to the back of the throat so that is how cilia helps in sweeping the mucus away from the nostrils and take it towards the back of the throat so thus it prevents the mucus from running down the nose now what happens when you catch cold now when what happens is that the cilia doesn't perform its function well when we catch cold now the cilia stops working when the cilia stops working there is nobody to sweep the mucus away from the nostrils as a result what happens the mucus starts flowing down the nose and we start feeling uncomfortable right and sometimes that mucus also get infected due to bacterial infection or something so that time the thing that time things become little worse and when you have to take antibiotics and only then you get rid of the bacterial infection right so you understand why do we have a ciliated columnar epithelium in the respiratory tract because the cilia plays a very specific function the cilia actually helps to move the mucus i write it here so that it helps you to remember so the purpose of cilia what does it do it sweeps the mucus away from the nostrils towards the back of the throat right and what is mucus now mucus is a slippery fluid like substance what does it do it blocks foreign materials from entering the lungs from entering the lungs so that is the purpose of mucus so now you understand the significance of cilia and why do we have ciliated simple columnar epithelium in the respiratory tract so now you understand why we have ciliated epithelium why do we have columnar epithelium because columnar epithelium helps in secretion helps in absorption and also gives a lot of protection so that is why we have simple columnar ciliated epithelium in the respiratory tract so with this we ended our discussion on simple epithelium we have discussed all the three types simple squamous simple cuboidal and simple columnar correct so now let us start our discussion on stratified epithelium now once you have understood the simple epithelium understanding the stratified epithelium becomes little easy so what is a stratified epithelium an epithelium which has many layers earlier in simple epithelium we had a single layer of cells but now we have multiple layers of cells right so here also again it has the same three types that is the stratified squamous stratified cuboidal and pseudo stratified columnar now you must be wondering why do we have this extra word pseudo here because stratified columnar is often seen as pseudo stratified columnar that means it is not actually stratified but it looks like stratified the word pseudo what does it means it means false that means something which appear something but it is actually something else that is the meaning of pseudo right so pseudo stratified columnar means it looks stratified but it is not actually stratified that means it looks as if it is made up of many layers but actually it is made up of a single layer that is the meaning of pseudo stratified so we will discuss each of them one by one so let us start with stratified squamous epithelium so again stratified means many layers squamous will still mean the same that means thin flat plate like structures so now we can say that these are multiple layers of thin flat plate like structures so the same simple squamous epithelium when arranged in many layers forms stratified squamous epithelium now you might think that when we already have simple squamous epithelium what was the need of having this stratified squamous epithelium 
Well, we have not designed all these things, right? These were all already designed inside the body, right? So how did we, what people did was they just observed them, they did a lot of studies on them and then they discovered them that, okay, these are the things which are present. Now, when you start justifying that why this was present, why that was present, you get many answers to many of your questions. So now the question was, when we had simple squamous epithelium inside our body, what was the need of the stratified squamous? What is the extra advantage that we get because of these additional layers? Think yourself, this extra additional layer will ensure better protection. Because earlier you had just one layer of thin flat structure. So that one layer itself was so delicate that it was not able to offer any protection. But now when you have those kind of delicate layers instead of one if now you have 100 layers that means you are actually getting a kind of cushion so now you can ensure better protection so these multiple layers ensured better protection to the underlying tissue so where do we actually found it we found it skin to prevent wear and tear so outer layer of skin has the simple squamous epithelium but if you look deep inside the skin, it is made up of stratified squamous epithelium. That means it has multiple layers because skin needs more protection because it is subject to wear and tear. The skin is the exposed part, right? So many a times we get hurt, we get stuck somewhere. So the skin is exposed to all kind of external hazards. So it, in order to prevent the wear and tear, the stratified squamous epithelium is present inside the skin. Now let us talk about the stratified cuboidal epithelium. So in a similar way, it is a multiple layer of cube shaped cells. So now here you see the same simple cuboidal epithelium is now arranged in multiple stacks. So this also ensures more protection than simple cuboidal, however, specialized in secretion. So there also the simple cuboidal epithelium was specialized for secretion. It was present in the secretory glands. So here also it, ensure, it specializes in secretion but ensures little more protection. So we found it in sweat glands. So these kind of epithelium are found in sweat glands. So why do we find these kind of, why don't we find... Um, why do we find simple cuboidal epithelium in salivary glands but we find stratified cuboidal epithelium in sweat glands? That's because when I talk of the salivary glands, they don't need much of a protection because they are already present somewhere inside. But when I'm talking about the sweat glands, they are again exposed. They are again found in the exposed areas. So they need little more protection. So in order to ensure that extra protection, stratified cuboidal epithelium is found in sweat glands. Now let us talk about the pseudostratified columnar epithelium. So what is this pseudostratified? Something which looks stratified but actually it is not. So it looks like stratified but is actually not. So if you look at this picture, by looking at this picture at once, you will feel that it is made up of multiple layers. But actually it is made up of a single layer. If you look at it closely, you will see that this is one cell, this is another cell, this is third cell, this is fourth cell. So it is just one layer, but the only thing is that here the cells are of different sizes. Now since they are of different sizes, that is why they appear as if they are in different layers. So single layer of tall pillar-like cells of different heights which make it appear stratified. So the, this difference in heights of the columnar cells, the pillar-like cells which are of different heights, because of their different heights, they look like stratified. It appears as if they are present in multiple layers. So they contain mucus secreting cells called goblet cells. So they contain this special type of cells, these pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. They contain the special kind of cells which secrete mucus. We just now talk about, talked about mucus. It is a fluid-like slippery substance. So these cells secrete, the goblet cells which secrete uh, this mucus are present in the pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. Now there are two types of pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. One is ciliated and the other one is non-ciliated. Ciliated means it has cilia, that is the hair-like structures which I was talking about. So the ciliated pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium is generally found in the upper or lower respiratory tract because cilia plays an important role in the respiratory tract. 
whereas non ciliated pseudo stratified epithelium is found in the male urethra because male urethra is another uh, organ which secretes mucus so in the male when you study the male reproductive system you see that the male urethra secretes this mucus which again plays a very important role in reproduction right so there we do not need there is no not much role of cilia right so the, the non ciliated pseudo stratified epithelium is found in male urethra whereas the ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium is found in the respiratory tract so with this i think we have discussed all the different types of uh, epithelial tissue and i hope that you have understood what is an epithelial tissue what are the functions of epithelial tissue where do we find epithelial tissue what are the different types of epithelial tissue and where each of those types of epithelial tissues are found and why right so with this i will quickly discuss about the different types of epithelial tissue which are present in different parts of the body with this diagram so that will become a kind of review of whatever we have studied so far so here if you see at the mouth what do you have what kind of epithelium do you have at mouth and skin so when i see mouth and skin i have stratified squamous epithelium right stratified squamous in skin and mouth correct so where do we have simple squamous epithelium in the linings of the blood vessels maybe somewhere around the heart you have the blood vessels where you have simple squamous epithelium so they are present in lining of blood vessels <clears throat> where else do you have you will have it in the air sacs of lungs so in the air sacs of lungs also you will have simple squamous right <clears throat> so simple squamous and simple and stratified squamous is done now simple cuboidal where do we have simple cuboidal we have it in the lines of kidney tubules so maybe somewhere in the kidney tubules we have simple cuboidal where else we also have it in uh, the glands where do we have stratified cuboidal stratified cuboidal are present in the sweat glands so sweat glands will have stratified cuboidal now comes the turn of simple columnar so where do we have simple columnar in the digestive system so this is displaying the intestine actually so in the digestive organs so the digestive organs will have the simple columnar epithelium simple columnar epithelium right where do we have stratified columnar epithelium so the stratified columnar epithelium will be present in the male urethra so the male urethra will have the stratified columnar epithelium right so these are some of the different types of epithelium which are present in our different body parts so i hope with this you would have understood what is epithelial tissue what are the functions that an epithelial tissue perform why do we have epithelial tissue at all and the different types of epithelial tissue so with this we will end our discussion on epithelial tissue and we will start with the next type of tissue that is connective tissue so children did you find the video useful if yes do not forget to share it with your friends so that they can also benefit out of this video and i will meet you all very soon with a new video with a new topic till then take care bye bye